This far into the generation, almost every developer is firing on all cylinders. The tech has been out there long enough, various deals have been struck to ensure exclusives, and across the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, literally millions of consumers are eagerly awaiting their next purchase. Best of all, as we head into the summer months, scores of sales mean that you'll be able to snap up the following titles for a fraction of their original price. But what to focus on? 2019 has been nothing short of a phenomenal year, saying nothing of how eventful it's been across the board. We've had everything from E3 showing its age to an indie-funded console called the Playdate, a smattering of returning franchises, exemplary remakes, even Nintendo skimped out on dropping a new Switch model at E3 just to do it on YouTube in the middle of July. The gaming industry is certainly changing as we close out the remaining years of the current generation, but that only means you have years worth of titles to snap up. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best video games of 2019 so far. Number 10. Observation The first home console release from indie devs No Code, Observation knocks it clean out of the park. Playing like a puzzle game with near-realistic graphics, you'll play as a memory-wiped AI called Sam, struggling to take care of one Dr. Emma Fisher through a number of security cameras, mechanical arms and drones. The best thing about Observation, though, is how much it nails the feeling of being lost in space. Opening with a cataclysmic event I won't spoil, the majority of your time is spent questioning what happened beforehand, where the rest of the crew have disappeared to, and what role, if any, you had in everything that went down. Observation's greatest strength is dealing an immaculate hand of tension and plot drive, a mixture few titles get right considering a common aim for a more protracted runtime. Here, though, with a more considered budget and artistically-minded creative goals, we've got the best space horror since Dead Space. Number 9. The Outer Wilds 2019 is the year indie games truly stepped up to hang with the triple A's, at least when it comes to overall graphical quality and the size of what you're buying. I've already mentioned Observation and something like Hellblade elevated the indie label in the first place, but The Outer Wilds is a thoroughly genius title that almost feels like the Witness's environment manipulating puzzles twinned with the idea of playing lore that was in Transistor. Where in the latter you were equipping different character loadouts to unlock the entire story, Outer Wilds doesn't have any combat whatsoever. Instead, you'll have to access a number of different gadgets and tools, but gameplay consists of interacting with runes, computer screens, ancient monoliths, and more. Story-wise, you're locked in a time loop tasked with understanding an ancient race of aliens to try and restore the flow of reality going forward. It's one hell of a setup, but Outer Wilds' really mind-blowing stuff comes almost by accident. The devs' guiding hand taking you from planet to planet, clue to clue, letting you feel an unbelievable sense of completion when all's said and done. Number 8. A Plague Tale Innocence Feeling like the first time a Sobo studio have gotten to use their sizable talents for an original creation in years, they've swapped out working with Ubisoft and Microsoft to take us on a surprisingly brutal journey through 1300s France. Directly inspired by the likes of The Last of Us and Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, siblings Amicia and Hugo are up against Inquisition soldiers and the game's most disgusting enemy, literal waves upon waves of disease-infested rats. How to put it, but the rat tech on display is something else. What feels like thousands of them come at you at any given time, and you'll need to pick specific routes through levels or use torches and light sources to keep them at bay. Whilst many reviews have chastised how much gameplay boils down to box puzzles and basic get spotted restart stealth, to focus on that would be to miss the point. Plague Tale's greatest qualities are in its storytelling and characters, both of which have received the most attention. Plague Tale's story moves at the perfect pace, and though at the outset you're only focused on survival, things quickly expand into a gripping narrative that doesn't let up until the credits. Number 7. Super Mario Maker 2 Doing for 2D games what Dreams is doing for 3D, and having the benefit of Nintendo's legendary game design tips alongside, Mario Maker is easily the finest custom suite of game elements available so far. Taking all the lessons learned from the Wii U original and putting them on a console people actually own, Mario Maker 2 bolsters its array of enemies, environmental mechanics, landscaping tools and more with a phenomenal single-player mode. Set around the idea of nabbing enough coins to rebuild Princess Peach's castle, each level teaches you how Nintendo designed Mario levels in the first place. You'll find multiple hidden keys, learn how to connect pipes between various zones, you'll create enemy gauntlets and various boss fights with one weakness that you can only access from a specific vantage point. The result is a very complex, deep package communicated to any player in a supremely intelligent way. Even if you just want to try a handful of levels from the community and play the Nintendo design solo stuff, Mario Maker 2 is more than worth it. And if you end up getting lost in all the custom stuff though, whew, I'll be on for the rest of the year. In fact, if you really want to try something balls hard, here's the level I made. It's a big old penis. Number 6. Katana Zero 
A six-year passion project by one Justin Stander, Katana Zero is a liquid but a smooth action platformer with the focus on slicing enemy goons into tiny strands of themselves, all in super slow motion. You play as Zero, a robe-wearing samurai-themed hero living in a cyberpunk city. Every day you appear to visit a therapist, who alongside giving you advice and exploring your mental state, will give you contract missions for the company he works for. Being that Zero is also an amnesiac, this setup perfectly blends the aforementioned action into a tight, thunderous plot, doling out revelations about your protagonist alongside a John Wick style world of spies and killers living all around. To say more would ruin everything and the game does end on a cliffhanger, but as this is developed by one person and sales have already been very impressive, it feels like Katana Zero could be the start of a phenomenal and essential franchise. Also just on a personal level, this gave me the Hotline Miami vibes and that is a very rare thing. Number 5. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled of all the old-school gems to try and bring back, CTR arguably have the most to lose or gain. Get it wrong and we'd forever look to the weighty, momentum-heavy PS1 original, but get it right and we'd have the best kart racer anyone has ever created, with robust online functionality and maybe a handful of additional tracks, racers or more. Thankfully, Beanox's work on CTR is a resounding example of the latter. Nitro Fueled retains the exact physics model and muscle memory sense of play as its original, the array of tracks spanning both CTR and Vicarious Vision Nitro Kart games. Difficulty has also been increased tenfold on the hard setting to compensate for how thoroughly ruthless the fanbase has become. And Activision are still putting money into the project, hosting a Grand Prix with daily goals and rewards all for free. Fans and myself are forever waiting for a microtransaction store to pop up and break everything, but CTR Nitro Field feels like it could single-handedly usher in a full kart racing renaissance, and there would be nothing better. Just give me Looney Tunes Racing, that is all I'm saying. Number 4. Mortal Kombat 11 If we're talking about games that change and transform to become games as a service, Mortal Kombat 11's launch was dogged by a god-awful in-game economy and a reliance on microtransactions to get away from some impossible difficulty spikes. Thankfully, it only took a couple of weeks for Netherrealm and Warner Brothers to respond, now turning Mortal Kombat 11 into the sort of experience you can dip into on a daily or weekly basis, trying to see every last piece of unlockable armor or customization equipment. Because MK11 does for the core mythos what Injustice did for DC Comics. Here, everyone from Scorpion to Cassie Cage can be specked out in elaborate gear, supplanting one of the best stories Netherrealm have ever put together with endless combat towers you can get completely lost in. As for the story itself, it feels like the devs and creative lead Ed Boon wanted to soft reboot the franchise, killing off or permanently changing many main characters, all to service what could be another few decades worth of sequels and spin-offs. It might have totally stumbled out of the gate, but MK11's solid mix of technical fighting, go-happy thrills and superhero rivaling character abilities remains one for the generation. Number 3. Resident Evil 2 of all the remakes and remasters that have come our way this generation, Resident Evil 2 will forever be held up as the way to do it. Yes, Crash Team Racing is solid, yes, Spyro and Crash are solid as trilogies, but Capcom reapproaching RE2 with 20 years worth of knowledge and lessons from the past? This is a whole new way to even do that original subject matter, and we've come away with an altogether different gameplay feel, but one that might arguably be better than its seminal original. This time around, RE2 cribs from RE4. Gone is the aimless hope for the best combat on PS1, and in is one of the best gore models you've ever seen. Arms, heads, limbs all break apart realistically, resulting in some truly horrifying imagery. You can nail a headshot, but it'll result in a zombie dragging its own cranium your way as if the body is propelled by sheer will alone. That overall idea of everything being recreated with hyper detail extends to the police station itself, a layered overlapping environment that you'll revisit multiple times to finally see everything. All in all, this is video game royalty doing the impossible and revisiting one of the best games ever made, only to make it better. Number 2. Devil May Cry 5 Talk about a glorious return to form. Sitting only behind DMC3 in an overall ranking, Devil May Cry 5 is all about giving you the tools to have as much fun as possible. Playing as three very different characters, returning hero Nero gets an entire repertoire of superpowers based out of his Devil Trigger hand prosthetic. Everything from electrified whips to wrestling slams and energy beams, you even ride the thing around the level kick flipping and posing as you go. Second is V, a character who summons minions that you control from a distance. His tiny army of hell spawn can still be comboed together, but only V himself moves in real time. It's a strange feeling, but one that no other action game has ever attempted, the result being incredibly fresh for the genre overall. Of course, the best is last, and old school slash original Dante truly makes his presence felt, gaining access to four different movesets replete with melee weapons and firearms, all of which can be swapped on the fly using the D-pad. 
This is the most multifaceted character in action game history. Devil May Cry 5 also looks stunning, a powerhouse display of technology regardless of which console you're playing on, the end result being pure controllable anarchy from top to bottom. And number one, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Easily the most polished, experimental, and all-round proficient game this year is Sekiro. If we're talking juggling combos and hyper-extended animation strings, maybe Devil May Cry 5 is your number one takeaway pick. But when it comes to pure game design, labyrinthine levels, pinpoint precise combat, brutal but rewarding gameplay curves, and epic memorable visuals, it's Sekiro all the way. In a brilliant twist on the standard Souls formula, Sekiro is all about timing and counterattacks. You'll want to get very familiar with that block button, because although you can hold it down, match a press with any incoming attack and you'll absorb all the damage, rather than taking it. Apply this to bosses that attack in rhythm, one off enemies that require additional tactics like charging into a spear stab, or the ability to wield frickin' lightning, and you have a base moveset that feels incredible to deploy and master. Yes, From Software's signature difficulty spikes did put a huge number of players off, but if you can tango with Shadows Die twice, the ride is unlike anything else. And that is my rundown of the best video games of the year so far. Let me know down below what your top three of 2019 are. I've been Scott from whatculture.com. Please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast, and I'll catch you soon.